Yeah. So at the, at the very, uh, like the very essence of what we do is we are trying to turn data into trades without any real human intervention. So we, we run these automated trading systems that are, uh, they consume like hundreds or thousands of data sets, all these different inputs. And, um, those data sets are getting transformed in, in, in various ways. And the end output of a trading system is sort of, you can think of it like one weight, like one portfolio weight per stock per timestamp. And then that, um, that we call like a panel gets consumed by an optimizer that turns it into trades that tries to go and achieve those weights in the market. Um, so your portfolio reflects these weights, which kind of come from this black box of like hundreds of things mashed together. Um, and so the, the real work of a quant sort of lies somewhere in that that like uh, A to B journey. And so I, I'd say that most of, most of a quant's effort is really like closer to the data. So you've got some data set that is maybe you're collecting tweets and you first, you have to be able to say, okay, I need to map these tweets to a company. What company is this tweet talking about? And you can do that, you know, you, maybe you say like, I'm going to look for tweets to say hashtag Apple or hashtag iPhone. And you find all those tweets and you have to figure out, okay, how do I tell this tweet is saying something like good or bad about iPhones? So you, maybe you run your sentiment analysis tool. You look for the number of like happy words versus sad words in the tweet. Now you've got some count of happy words and count of sad words. And you need to transform that into some like, uh, so we got to eventually make it to this portfolio weight. So there's all this work that then goes into what are the ways we can transform those counts of happy and sad words in, into, you know, some final value that we can then call portfolio weight. And we might, you know, take into account, uh, how much the price has changed over the last 10 days or, um, what people are saying about other similar related companies or, there's all these like nuances and different ways you can kind of transform this basic input into that portfolio weight. So you might then come up with say like a hundred different transformations that you can use to create this portfolio weight. And then say you've got kind of like a hundred, a hundred of these portfolio weights for Apple and you've got to find some way to combine those into one final value that you're going to then go and trade. And this process, part of the process we call like fitting or portfolio construction. And um, there there's, uh, this is sort of where maybe some of the more hardcore machine learning stuff comes in. It's, you can imagine there's for every, you know, like you've got your tweet data set and then you've got like five other different types of data sets. So you're doing similar stuff on and you've got to combine all those features into one prediction. So then you set up some experiments to say like, what are the best ways I can weight all of these different data sets or maybe combine them in some nonlinear way to produce this prediction. Um, and then finally, when you have that prediction, there's a, another step where you're sort of mapping that onto actual positions and trying to tweak your optimizer so that it doesn't trade too aggressively and incur too much transaction costs. So you're doing some like um, post trade analysis to see like, Hey, are we actually able to get in and out of these positions? Is the book too big? Is the book too small? Like, could we be taking more risk? Do we, are we, do we have too much risk allocated in this one area? So that there's kind of, it's just this sort of massive multifaceted, uh, like machine and a quant will eventually get to touch most parts of this machine. But at any given time, they likely specialize in one specific area of the process, particularly at a big place like, like a Citadel or a D-Shar or Two Sigma. Like, there's often a little bit more specialization on each part of the assembly line. At a smaller shop, or um, uh, there, there are big shops that kind of take a more siloed approach. A quant will sort of own that whole assembly line um, and be kind of responsible for the end-to-end -end product, but it, 
whether that work is segmented or not sort of varies by by where you are.